All right then my friends, so we know now that we need to create a service worker to implement all of that app-like behavior into our website. Now, when we create a service worker, it goes through a specific life cycle. And this is a really important concept to grasp. So I'm gonna explain all of this in this video. So let's imagine now that we have a web app made up of different files, an index.html file, styles.css, app.js and an image folder with some different images inside it. And now say we create a service worker JS file in the root directory of our app called sw.js. Now we create this in the root directory of the application because that gives it a scope of our entire site, a global scope if you like, meaning later on it can access all the different files in the site. If we created this in a subdirectory, for example, image over here, then its scope would be only in that subdirectory and it could only access files and control files inside that folder. We don't want that. We want to place it into the root so it can control all of the files later on. Now, the first step when we create a service worker is to register it with the browser. Now we do this from our normal JavaScript file, app.js, not from the service worker file itself. So this is us telling the browser that a certain JavaScript file, sw.js, should be registered as a service worker and put onto that separate service work thread. So when we do this, the browser fires the install event, which is the browser basically installing the service worker. Now this is a lifecycle event and we can listen to this lifecycle event inside the service worker file itself. And then we could react to it in some way when it happens if we wanted to. For example, we could be listening for when the install event fires. And at that point, we could do some asset caching so that later on, we could access those assets that we cached when we're offline. We won't need a connection to get them. And we'll learn all about that later on. So this install event fires only once when the service worker is registered. So we register it, it fires the install event. And then at some point after the service worker is installed, it becomes active. Now at that point, the browser fires an active event, which we can also listen to and react to if we want inside the service worker file. Now at this point, once the service worker is active, it can access all the different pages and all the different files inside its scope. Now, since we placed it in the root directory, it means that it can access all the different files and pages on the site. And that means at that point when it's active, the service worker can listen for all these different fetch events that happen or HTTP requests, if you like, and it can intercept them if needed. Now, at some point, imagine that we reloaded the page, the browser. Does the service worker go through exactly the same lifecycle every time we do that? Well, when we refresh the page, the service worker is still registered right here because that happens inside app.js but it only reinstalls the service worker if the code inside the service worker file has changed since the last time it was installed in the browser. So that means when we reload the page, if there's been no change to the service worker code, it will not reinstall it because it's already there and it's already installed. It doesn't get deleted when we refresh the page. It remains there in the background. And then when we reload, if there's been no change after we register the service worker, we don't need to reinstall it. Now, if there is a change to our service worker file, then it will reinstall it. Now, does that mean it also activates the new service worker and replaces the old one completely? Well, no, the new service worker is installed when we reload the page, but then it stops and it remains in waiting to be activated. Meanwhile, the old service worker is going to continue to be active by default, right? And the new service worker is only going to become active after all instances of our app is closed. Now that could be all the tabs that we have open in a browser or just the app themselves on mobiles. And then when it's reopened at that point, the browser will take the new service worker that's in waiting and it's going to activate it. Now it does this because after we make a change to our service worker file, the page initially loads with that older version of the service worker installed, right? And on that web page loading, the older version is controlling the app. 
So after the page loads, the browser also starts to install the new service worker, right? Which may take a small amount of time to complete. If after it was installed, it activated the new version automatically without a page refresh, it means directly swapping out our old service worker version for the new one midway through our app loading or the user interacting with the app. And this could result in breaking changes. So that's why we have this specific lifecycle of events and it remains in waiting when we install a new service worker because the old one is midway through doing things. So it remains in waiting. Then when we refresh again, that's when it becomes active from the very start. OK, so then this controls the different files and this can intercept all the different requests, the different fetch events. Now, I know this seems quite complex at first, but we will be coming back to this diagram as we work through fleshing out our own service worker. And if you do need a refresher midway through, come back to this video for a reminder of how the life cycle of a service worker progresses, because this is an important concept. And if when you're making service workers, you're making changes and refreshing the pages and you're not sure why something's working, it's probably because you've not fully grasped how this service worker lifecycle works. OK, so it is really important. And now we know a little bit more about this lifecycle. Let's try registering a service worker in the next video.